Another aspect to talk about on the uh, DSG cars um, is the gear blip control. So basically the gear blip is used when you're coming down a gear, so say if you're going from 5th to 4th, the gear blip is used to basically rev match the RPM for the next given gear. Um, and it's really useful to get this set up right because it basically makes the shifts actually as smooth as possible. So instead of going over the whole gear blip strategy, because some of it is used for sequential gearbox controls, what I'm actually going to do is just go over the DSG part of it because it seems to be more um, used in our kits, which because most of our kits are mainly based on G DSG cars. So first of all, the mass time, the gear blip mass time is basically if if one gear blip, blip if one gear blip request has occurred, the mass time is amount of time that basically it will wait to actually. Um, allow another request to be met. Now the reason this is set as one millisecond is because on some DSG cars they actually allow you to change from say seventh gear into fourth gear. So if you would pull the paddle three times it will actually jump the, the target gear from seven to four and with doing that basically the gear blocks the gear blip request will come in three times. When it does that you need to act on it very quickly because if you don't then the RPM will start to fall. So that's why the mass time is like that. Then what you've got is your blip time. This is the amount of time which the, the gear blip actuation is active. Okay, And you can see that this is set based on RPM. Um, you've then got clutch switch disables gear blip. End of request ends blip. Now basically the, the, the transmission ECU will request a gear blip. Okay, will request a torque up. Okay, And this is basically sent in on gear blip request over here. So if you double click on this actuation, you'll see that when you do a downshift, this item will say yes, and then hence the ECU will then send a blip in to deal with it. Blip mode um, and the delta, proportion, uh, the delta proportion for blip complete is based more used on the sequential boxes. There's no point going over that. Same for prediction. And, um, and then the, the area we need to look at is the enable rev limiter. So what happens is... The, the engine knows the RPM you're currently at and it knows the gear you're in. So basically what it can do is it can calculate the, the, the post-engine speed after the shift. So say if you're in, say, fourth gear at 3,000, it would know that if you were to go to third gear, that the perfect RPM would be, say, around about 4.5 based on your drive ratio and gear uh, ratio that is inputted part of the base map. So what it will then do is it will actually invoke a rev limiter after the on the gear blip, it'll actually invoke a rev limiter on the engine control to hold the RPM where it needs to be. Um, and that's really crucial to basically getting the engine to have a nice down change and smooth. Enable rev cut. Rev cut is another uh, feature, is the hard cut of the rev limiter control. If your car is making a lot of torque, you might want to use that, but I've never had to use that. Hold time after shift complete. So you can basically hold the rev limiter for a set amount of time after the gear blip request is gone. Um, and then the recalculate rev limit as speed changes is quite useful. So if the car is braking very heavily and your speed is changing, so i.e. your RPM, then it will recalculate the rev limiter to suit. Multi-change uh, allows, allows you basically to set how many gear changes you allow the system to do. So we've just jumped into this. This one, actually, this car actually allows you to have more than one. So we're going to put in here four because um, you can actually do four changes on one in this particular car. Direct on-off blip actuator is not used. Um, that's just if you're using a like a uh, like a solenoid on the throttle of a, a normal TPS, the, a normal throttle body. There's an, an actuator that basically blips the throttle for a set time. We've actually got this as a progressive blip uh, based on drive-by-wire. So the the uh, effect is drive-by-wire. The target then allows you to input a drive-by-wire target based on the gear and RPM you're at. And the roll-on rate is basically if you can imagine, for a, say a driver was um, heel and towing, basically what you'll find is that when they heel and tow, they don't have a, uh, a throttle that would just suddenly go from say naught to 30% instantly, which is what a drive-by-wire to do. As they step on the throttle, the throttle is rolled in. So we can replicate that with a roll-on rate um, for the drive-by-wire to basically allow the throttle to gain momentum like slowly. The trail time, after the gear blip has completed, the trail time basically is a, a map which allows you to have the throttle open for a set amount of time after the gear blip to basically allow the RPM and the engine's kind of mass airflow to stabilize. If you were to suddenly just shut the throttle after the gear blip has occurred, 
um, what can happen is the RPM can the torque of the engine can suddenly fall and the RPM can start to drop. So the key thing about the trail blip is that it allows you to open the throttle for X amount of time and a target in order to maintain the RPM uh, where it needs to be. And I'll show you that in a log in a minute. Now the pre-blip stuff again is not used um, with the uh, DSG control. So let's go for a drive and uh, and have a look at exactly what, what's happening in a data log and how you can look to improve in it. So what we're going to do first, we're going to actually um, we're going to set the, the blip time really low to show what happens if the blip time is actually set wrong. So currently in fourth gear, two and a half thousand RPM, I lift off the throttle, down change, and you can see, you might not see it in the actual video um, very clearly on the RPM, but you'll see it now in the data log that the, the, the gear blip wasn't good at all because basically the amount of time that was actuating the blip was way too short nowhere near enough time to allow the RPM to climb to rev match. So let's grab this and go blip one. Grab the data. And then close. FD, load latest data in S view. Okay, gauge X, let's clear all the gauges over here. Let's look at clutch pressure. And then let's look at gear blip request, gear blip state, and gear, and RPM. Okay, so I've gone up through the gears. I've then lifted off. You can see here in red, the gear blip uh, request comes in from the transmission. So you can see here, gear blip request comes in. The transmission is asking for the RPM to be um, like basically uh, to rise and the torque to be increased. You can see here now if I open up a new gauge, channel add, TPS, you can see here the, f the TPS only blipped for 100 milliseconds, a very short amount of time. You can see the RPM comes up, but it's nowhere near long, long enough in order to get that RPM to actually uh, follow where it needs to be for the, the next given um, gear. And you can see the clutch pressure as it comes up here. You can see at that point it drags the RPM up here because the clutch pressure is being applied drags the RPM up, but actually what should be happening is if we look at the rev limiter, the uh, rev limit RPM, I'll just grab that in a set, you actually see that that will be plotted up here and falling nicely to uh, hold the RPM. So let me just grab that sconfig device, grab the config, add the rev limiter RPM. It's quite useful to see, allow you to plot exactly what's going on. So put this at 20, set that config. That's now flashed in there. Okay, so we know that 100 milliseconds is way too short. Let's go the other way. Let's now go, let's basically bang in here 600. So what's going to actually happen is now the throttle is going to blip for a long time. It's going to be sat on the rev limiter, uh, waiting for the transmission to engage the clutch in and basically turn off the gear blip request. So let's just do the same test, same gear. Two and a half thousand RPM, lift off, flip, and basically the uh, the RPM came up nicely. Engage the next gear. So let's have a look at that log and see exactly what it did. So 600 milliseconds. Grab this log, we use the same layout. Okay, so let's have a look. So basically you can see here that the, the, the gear blip has come in, the throttle is actually opened up for a long time, and you can see the, the, the rev limiter now, um, if I grab the rev limiter RPM, you can see the rev limiter RPM comes up here, 3,600, and it's trying to hold 3,600 here. Now you can see here where the rev limiter is active in purple, it drops out here ever so slightly just because the RPM has dropped a little bit too much. And we can actually look at smoothing that out now um, uh, to, to suit. So basically we, what we're trying to do, and then you can actually see where the gear blip uh, request turns off in red here. You can see the clutch has come up and uh, and then basically it looks into to holding the, the RPM smooth. Now this is not a, a nice way of doing it. We're actually gonna just change it now. The other thing you can see is the trail blip is actually active there after the shift has occurred to basically um, kick the, the throttle position up for a set amount of time to hold it. It probably needs a little bit more trail blip 
in this area here to here. So um, the delta here is 171 milliseconds. So we're 171 milliseconds after the uh, the shift occurred. We want to just hold it there a bit more. So let's go in. Let's let's have a look at the rev limiter settings. It's obviously the rev limiter. Um, the values are a bit too aggressive. So let's have a look. So it's based on a timing based one here. So what we actually do, we're going to actually add seven degrees there. So it's just not so sensitive. Make sure the tripod while I'm closing is off. Okay, so now what we should find is that the RPM shouldn't actually drop out of its target. It should actually hold it more flatter here because the amount of torque that's being reduced, if we look at the T ignition retard or ignition final, we can see here exactly what is happening. The basically the timing is being reduced here because it's reached its uh, RPM target and the, t the ignition time is going to minus 14. It's pulling away a bit, too, a little bit way too much torque there. It's causing the RPM to fall quite rapidly and then hence um, cause the uh, the timing to then come back in because it's come out of the, the rev limiter hysteresis. So now what we've done, we've taken that torque reduction down. We don't need as much as that in order on these gear blips to hold it. Uh, that's changed live because it's uh, in green. So the other thing is worth mentioning. Now you can see that the gear blip time was obviously there for a long time. Um, and when it did finally come in, there was a bit of a, uh, like a, a forceful uh, like bang. It was a, not a bang, so to speak, but it comes in with a bit of uh, force here where the clutch comes in. So what we actually do is we can actually just drop this gear blip time back. Put it to, uh, say, 350. And do the same test again. So fourth gear, 2,000 RPM, 2,500 RPM. Blip. And that was much better then. You can actually feel it just, as, uh, just when driving the car. So go to device, read the data again. put it here 350 the milliseconds didn't really matter so much on this because the rev limiter is the key the thing that actually holds it let's pull the data do you still like the, 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 the data on there say yes no point keeping them after they are now installed on the computer here we can file load its latest data in S view okay much better so what we're looking at now you can actually see here, let's clean this up a little bit, don't need the gear blip state, the rev limiter active we're not too worried about. So you can see here now look, where the rev limiter RPM, you can see here it's trying to hold 3,031, it first was a bit higher and then it drops it down to basically hold it and you can actually see the RPM is, is holding nicely now. Now the only thing you can actually see that it does need a little bit more is that you can see here that the RPM is, is nice and flat now and the rev limiter is not bouncing, etc. And uh, and you can see that the RPM, when it basically ends that gear blip request, is actually matching the um, the, the, the current RPM that the, uh, that the actual engine is seeing, which is when the clutch is applied, that is what it drags the RPM to. So that's the basically matching the input shaft speed of what the uh, the gearbox has. So what we're looking to do is actually now get this a little bit, so the RPM comes up a little bit higher and, uh, and matches this a bit more. So there's two ways we can do that. Obviously, we can blip the, um, blip the throttle a little bit more um, to give it a bit more torque to allow the throttle to come, the, the, the um, RPM to climb a little bit more. Um, the other thing we can do is edit the, um, we can add a, like an adder onto the rev limiter RPM uh, to suit. But... The other, the other easy way is you can actually look to, to see more of a problem which happens here. You can see that the TPS actually ends, okay, before the uh, the gear blip request is finished. So you can see here that the, the TPS is active here, and that's the gear blip time. So from here to actually when the gear blip request ends, 220 milliseconds, the actual throttle shuts there, and that's actually causing then the RPM to drop because there's no throttle opening and hence the torque is uh, is dropping there. So what we can do is actually just increase the gear blip time, um, open the trail blip for a bit more as well to get those RPM matching, and then we should find the next shift then will actually match the RPM a lot smoother, and that's the key 
to get in the downshift to be as perfect as the uh, as uh, as the factory would want. So though, let's add 200 uh, milliseconds onto this, and then we we'll go to the progressive blip and the trail time and target. Let's increase the target a little bit. Let's add 20% onto this, so the throttle's open a little bit more for a little bit longer afterwards, if it does, uh, to try and hold that RPM there. So, let's do the same test again. Okay, device, read the data, let's pull the data from the device. So, 5.50 milliseconds. Okay, let's now look at the log now. So you can see here now, basically the RPM now has come up it's on the limiter here in order to control the RPM. The gear blip is still active here. And you can see here now that when it actually shifts, the RPM is matching pretty nicely. When the actual gear blip request ends, which is here, the trail blip then becomes active. Holds it. It's a little bit too much on the trail blip to be only ever so slight. So you can see the RPM is following here. The trail blip, the, the gear blip request turns off here in red. The trail blip then becomes active. It's a little bit too much on the torque there at that given point. And then that causes the RPM to go up ever so slight. We're talking 50 RPM. As, as a driver, you generally wouldn't feel that. Um, I certainly didn't feel it. It felt really smooth. And you can actually see on this this particular RPM down here in the higher gear how actually how well that actually works there on that gear blip. Um, so basically, what you need to do is at the higher, uh, as I said, it's it's programmable based on gear and RPM as the base values. So what you'd want to do is in this particular gear here. So it's like a gear in fifth gear, let's say 2,700 RPM. Basically, all you want to do is just take your trail blip down a little bit there. Uh, the lower gears down below there are actually working nicely. And you can see here another gear blip up here. That that one's pretty much perfect as well. So, yeah, hopefully that goes into an insight of how you can fine-tune your gear blip settings with a DSG car to basically get it to be as smooth as possible. Launch control.